Why are you going to shoot me too? We don't like prick teasers. We share the risk, we share the profit. That's the way it works. Place on the ground now! Place on the ground Prison's not a good option for a bloke like you, Billy. We need you to wear a wire. I can't have a dog on my crew, Billy. Hey! You ripped us off, Mock Bell. I want my money, asshole! Watch your back. They're my sworn enemy, and you're sucking up their ass. It's just business, Carl. This is the future you could have with me, Bruno. Because we're tight, aren't we, huh? You and me? Yeah, mate, we're solid. We're solid, we're brothers. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> relax. G'day, Tony. This is a warrant for your arrest. It's all over, Tony. Antonio Sarge Montbell, you are being charged with one count of being knowingly concerned in the importation into Australia of a prohibited import, namely a trafficable quantity of cocaine. Jail didn't suit Tony Mockbell. It cramped his style. But lucky for him, he only spent a year on remand before we were forced to drop the charges. The unmasking of a few corrupt cops in the old drug squad meant the evidence against Tony was deemed to be tainted. So the fat bastard got a free walk at our expense and went straight back to what he knew best. <laughs> Drug dealers need a reliable supply of drugs to deal. To make drugs, you need precursor chemicals. And Tony had a secret stash. Shit. It's the Yugoslav pseudo. Three, four tubs. What am I sitting on? 500 a pop. 12 mil. Try 200. Million. Right, well, if you cook it yourself. Us, we. The Mopo brothers, joint venture, okay? Us brothers. And Carl, I'll give Carl a slice too. Oh, come on, Tony, Carl's not our brother. He's my brother, Hoity, okay? And it's my fucking suit, and you'll treat him with respect. We're gonna flood this city with Mopo product. Amphetamine, MDMA, methamphetamine, whatever. If they want it, we're gonna sell it to them. We're gonna need a few good cooks. Yeah, and we're gonna start with the best, Bruno Rich. Bruno's giving it away, he's gone square. Well, we'll fucking get him back. Hey, Tony. Bruno. No! <laughs> Was that really necessary? Get your pots and pans out, Bruno. Don't fight it. They're coming to cook for us again. Oh, I'm out of the game. My wife said you... Oh, shit. Listen, everything we make... Don't fight it. Buy, sell, buy again. Everything. Speak for yourself. All you got to say is yes, Bruno. Hi, hi. One day, we're going to get out of this shit, Carl. We can do this all day. a property empire. Bigger than Westfields. Mock Bell Link. <laughs> Old hands in the new drug squad like me and Big Jim O'Brien weren't too thrilled Fat Tony was back on the streets. Next time, we'd lock him up for good. I right, someone took my yogurt from the fridge. Fruits of the forest. Who was it? Not the yogurt type. You look like the yogurt type. Not. Cogman, Michel. Update me on Mock Bell. Paul Dale. Brunswick Detectives. Fat Tony's home turf. Jim O'Brien. Welcome to MDID. Yeah, it's good to be here. Jim Coughlin. Maria Tomasetti, our totem Tasmanian. And David Michel, here's your date. So we'll be going after Tony Mockbell. Bastard's got to leave, Pat. Cancel it. Welcome.
Chào đây Chào Bịch Trong Billy Hello mate Good to see you man Good to see you You know Michael? Michael Marshall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you, right? Hey, Ted. Yeah. And you are? Hungry. This is Emma. She's cool. Just hang, baby, all right? Um, can we uh, have a little chat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Michael and me, we are ready to step it up a notch. We want to buy a tub of your Yugoslav Zudo. You what? On consignment. We'd kick in 30% on top once the cook's done. You got no right talking to him or anybody else about my gear, do you understand? Tom, it's easy for you, all right? Otherwise, I wouldn't ask. Who else you been flapping your mouth about? After everything that happened with Billy Fisher, you need people you can trust. Well, if you came to me, just to me, I might have done business with you, OK? Maybe. Would you bring strangers to my door? What's the matter with you? What do I have to do? Grow a fucking brain and keep your mouth shut. She plays up to you Every time you walk into the You are gorgeous. I know. Mm. I thought we were talking about me coming to work for you. Yeah. What? 23 years old. <laughs> You're too old for me. Oh, shit. How old do you think I am? Is me fucking you part of the job? I just want to know up front what the deal is. No. We're good. She plays up to you. She plays up to you. You look good. Fuck off. Can you see my roots? I get some cardboard in for you. How's my girl? No, oh, she's missing you, of course. So you're gonna be there for me when I get out? Of course I am. Come I don't on. expect you to be a camel or anything. Just don't go for getting entangled, you know. You still think <clears throat> Billy was dogging you? Yeah. Yeah, the feds have got him holed up overseas somewhere. Witness protection. They must have had something big on him. Oh, don't make excuses for little shit. Well, I'm just trying to understand. Survival beats loyalty every time. Like what? You'd do the same if you were in his shoes? That's different. I love you. He doesn't. I miss you, the fucker. If you bought an Eki in Melbourne back then, chances are it was Tony Mockbell's brand. With the massive profits he made, he added to his property portfolio. Shops, home units, nightclubs. Sometimes he paid in cash, sometimes he didn't. Just as long as his name never appeared on the paperwork, he was unstoppable. Here he is. Untouchable. The Mediterranean, eh? Mm. Or so he thought. Hey. Fellas? Trey? Now, yeah, I don't know what you blokes are fighting about, and I don't really care. But don't get up until it's sorted. The ass has dropped out of the Eki market. In this economy, it's the only thing going backwards. What do you know about it? See, I haven't bought an Eki for ages. What do they go for these days? Someone's dumping cheap product. Your friend Carl's been mouthing off that it's him. Talk to Carl then. Carl's too lazy to scratch his own ass. We think it's you. Don't know what you're talking about, fellas. Flooding the market's no good for any of us. Enjoy your lunch. Smug Tony wasn't worried about a price war. Nick? He was big enough to beat any competition. Tony. What he should have been worrying about was the gangland war. Carl Williams had revenged himself on Mark Moran. And next on his hit list, brother Jason. Put your hands on the roof. 
MDID, that's a drug squad, kids. You're under arrest. Terry? Commercial quantity? On top of Andy's armed rob conviction? Your kids are in a bit of strife, mate. Terry, help us and we'll help your kids. What you want to know? Who do you do business with? Who do you rub shoulders with? How long have you got, boys? I know everyone in town. Well, you're pretty chummy with Tony Mockbell, aren't you? We'd love to know what he's been up to. Terry Hodson's deal to keep his kids out of jail yielded immediate results. Turned out he knew the location of just about every backyard drug lab in Greater Melbourne. And lots of them were controlled by Fat Tony. The biggest noise in town, it has to be Mockbell. Why does it have to be Mockbell, Coglin? Mockbell thinks big. But as we speak, he's setting up a new lab, two new labs, three new labs. Best guess on the street value of what they're cooking? 50, 60 mil. Minimum. Maybe much more. Several hundred million. Maria, where's your eraser thing? Anybody seen the eraser? Give it here. All right, ladies and gents, heed me if you will. I've got a new char topper. Tony Mockbell. On his balls. I make cufflinks out of him. Big cufflinks, boss. That's why I like him, Maria. Big. Fat Tony was back on top of our shit list. Right where he belonged. It's a really nice place, Tony. Let's say, Hoddy. Oh, not to my taste, Tony, but... Would you like to buy a nightclub? No, I just don't think it's our best investment, you know? <laughs> Tony fucking Mockbell, eh? Johnny the Desker. <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> when'd, you get, ah. when'd you get out? Where's my invitation, eh? I didn't know you were out. All right, fuck off so we can talk. Speak to me like I'm your wife. OK, Mrs Williams, fuck off so we can talk. Can Johnny come for a dance, huh? Just don't dilute me this time. Tony Mockbell. Attention, Tony Mockbell. Yes. I just want to say a few words about Tony. I'm Willie Thompson and I've known Tony since high school. And, um, well, he's my best friend. I love this man. Anyway, what I wanted to say was that, um, you've come a long way since more than high, mate. And I'm, I'm proud of you. I mean, how many, how many nightclubs is it now? This place is a palace. Tony Mockbell, everyone! Congrats, mate. Congrats, buddy. Hey, everyone, listen, just for the record, this actually is not my club. The club belongs to the guy whose name it is on the, uh, on the front door. So any complaints, go to him. That's Hadji over there with Jerry Hodson. And I reckon it's your shout, Hadji! Yeah. Hey! Welcome to everyone! <laughs> you idiot. Cops find out about this place. They'll come down to me like a shower of shit. Use your fucking head. What are you doing? I'm sorry, mate. I'm just... Hey, Bruno Rich, why you got him stashed away? In Rye. Why? No, no, in Rye. Why, you want to do a cook on the side? Yeah, well, if it's not going to put you out. You know, I'll check it out, mate, let you know. All right, Rye. Yeah. It's called the Wind Wonder. He's one step down from a drug dealer now. He's a property developer. I've got to say, I don't mind it. Looks like a bunch of bent cocks. It's a $45 million project. Where's he get that kind of money? Oh, so he's uh, bigger than you thought. Yeah, all right. I want a list of all of his assets. Cars, houses, businesses. Anything he can't account for from legitimate income, I want to seize as proceeds of crime. The Winged Wonder residential development was still on top of Tony's agenda. If I was a head shrinker, not a cock, I might have said it represented a deep-seated desire to go straight and make his dead dad proud of him. <laughs> Listen, uh, do you know who that bloke is that cast on him to? 
Paul Dale, he's a cop in the drug squad. Uh, gentlemen can drink the bar on me. Detective Sergeant Paul Dale. Carl's mate. I wouldn't say mate. Yeah, 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 Paul Dale. Carl's cop friend. What do you mean by that? Oh, you work for Carl, don't you? Nope. You know, you should come work for me. Make some real money. Drive a nice car. I don't want your money. It's not mine. It's yours. Hey, it was good seeing your brother today. Hey, Tone. The right lad gets busted. Bruno and Cavalier get arrested. And I saw you talking to the arresting officer. So? You talk to cops? Which way is the information going, Carl? What? What are you saying? You asked me about the right drug house, right? And then he gets busted? My brother's looking at eight years. Mate, that's coincidence. Drug squad's all over us. Coincidence, eh? You calling me a dog? Mate, if I was a dog, you'd be long gone. Are you threatening me? Is that what you're doing? You think cause Billy Fisher dogged you and everyone's gonna? That's a shit way to live, mate. We're either friends, or we're something else. How's it going? Uh, early days, boss. Yeah, well, pull your finger out. I want these bastards to bleed. Boob jobs. What? Well, if Mockbell's wives and girlfriends have had breast implants paid for by proceeds of crime, we seize them. I tell everyone. You gonna uh, build it? If the council ever get their heads out of their asses. That's great. Oh, love it. That one. Right. I wanna live in that apartment. Uh, that one. Uh, right there. Oh, oh shit, sorry. <laughs> sorry. She really like it, eh? Who designed it? Huh? Oh, me, kind of, you know? Had an idea in the concept? No way. <laughs> <laughs> Local government had repeatedly rejected his winged wonder development application, citing objections from the community. But Tony had finally persuaded the planning committee to take one more look at it. Now, this may be Sydney Road, but, well, it's the gateway to Melbourne. And for that reason, we have an obligation to this city. But once again, they turned Fat Tony down flat. So what did he do? He appealed to a higher authority. I love this city, Mick. So what's this, uh, this thing, like, this business that you've got before the Moreland City Council? The Winged Wonder, is that what they call it? 
Well, it keeps getting knocked back by the council, Nick. That's the thing. I thought maybe a man of your experience in the business might have some advice for me or uh, contacts. Well, I know people in Moreland. And I could make some calls on your behalf, but I'm not going to. Mick, I'll tell you what. Listen, I'm going to make out a check, all right? Now, you can fill in the blanks. Don't embarrass you like. yourself, Tony. Favourite charity? Come on. Tony, Campy. don't Come embarrass on. yourself. Mate, it's a donation, all right? Tony, so you got a bad reputation around town. This, um, this drug business, the people that you uh, surround yourself with, Carl, for example, right? you got a PR problem. you got to work on your image. Get some new friends. Make a peace with Jason and Lewis. And then, and only then, will I make maybe one or two calls on your behalf. Tony, thanks for meeting with us. <clears throat> You're a real sport. What'd I tell you, Dad? Tony's a real good bloke. So here we are. Three good blokes. We're getting out of the manufacturing game. So much work, so much trouble. Why bother? We get the same stuff cheaper from you. I don't need another major player in town, Lewis. Oh, we wouldn't be selling local. We'd take it into state. There's another advantage having us as customers. It'll keep us happy. Come on, mate, you're going to threaten me. Oh, I'm not threatening you, Tony. Yeah, well, what Jason means is when everyone's happy, everyone's happy. Peace in our time, sort of thing. Look, we'd rather work with you than against you. All right. Oh, good night. You're having an upper sheltered workshop, Tony. What are you doing here, Carl? Come on, Jason, let's go. I'll get my lad to call you, all right? Come anywhere near us, I'll kill you. What are you doing here, Carl? I was in the area. Bullshit. All uh, right. I was following Jace. See you, Tom. will think you mean it. Coles or Woolies? Coles, please. And then I need to go to the butcher off Puckle Street. All right. But look, wait. What, what's wrong? I don't know. We've got to get a move on. We've got to get you back here in time to take the kids to footy. I need to know you're watching out for yourself, though. What? Yes. People are killing each other for, for nothing. Mum, don't be bloody stupid. Underworld figure has been murdered in the car park of an Essendon hotel. In broad daylight, Jason Moran and another small time criminal were gunned down in front of their children and dozens of others at a nearby football clinic. Kelly Curtin begins our coverage. Innocent children caught up in the deadly world of criminals. Mrs. Moran? My name's Charlie Bessina from the Homicide Squad. Very sorry for your loss. When you're ready, it'd be very helpful if you could make a statement. What would I say? Well, you could tell us about the last time you saw your son. Well, we can come back to that. Why don't we come back to that? Jason. He was... He was... It's your favourite, huh? <laughs> we always have our favourites. We know we shouldn't, but... 
We do. Ty! Where's Carl? Uh, he's upstairs sleeping. He got pissed before. Hey, what's the problem? Jason Moran is the problem, Roberta. What? Someone finally put a bull in that useless dickhead. Did they? How are you, Tony, mate? All right? Johnny, get out of the way. Mate, hey, get out of the just way. Just come and problem, celebrate mate? with us, all right? He gave us nothing but misery. There were children in that car. Kids! Mate, they didn't get hurt or nothing, all right? Relax. There were children Stop. everywhere. It was a footy clinic. Jesus Christ! Ty, you look. The whole fucking world is going to come down on us now. All of us. Tell that stupid husband of yours enough. Enough! Enough what? Tony eventually forgave Willie Thompson for being a dickhead and advanced him enough cash to bring a shipment of precursor chemicals down from Sydney. As always, there was a ready market in Melbourne. Oh, I'll have to get it to you. Mike, the usual way of conducting business is that I give you the thing and you give me the money for that thing I gave you. What are you, a fucking economist now? A couple of days max, really. And don't go casting aspersions. What? It's a word. Are you telling me serious you don't have the cash? A couple of days then. The easiest way to avoid paying a drug debt? Use a gun. It was Carl. You know that, right? Hey, Tony. Willie and I weren't on the best of terms in the end, but, you know, she realised what's important. Yeah, thanks, mate. Ready? <laughs> Marshall's got front tenant up here. You say that was him? Of course it was. Been telling everyone how Willie ripped him off. Bitching to me about Willie the other night, saying how he wanted to kill him. Just saying, Tone. Are you absolutely sure? It was Carl. And the prick is so fucking paranoid right now, he'll probably take it out on me next. Yeah, and if you call him on it, that's exactly what's gonna happen. Don't you make an enemy out of him. Don't be a dick, Tony. Fucking leave it! Carl knew Tony wasn't convinced Michael Marshall was the bloke who killed his mate Willie. And he didn't want him to find out who did. So he gave instructions for hitman Johnny Tedesco to take out Marshall before Tony had a chance to put the hard word on him. I guess it wasn't personal. Just business. That's good, mate. Carl didn't realise, Johnny Tedesco was already on police radar for a series of violent armed robberies. He had a tracking device installed in his vehicle. A mobile unit was shadowing his every move. Jim, we've got a bead on a major Tony Mockbell drug house. According to Terry Hodson, the premises is rented under the name of Emma Stiles. Hodson's your informant? Mm -hmm. He says Emma's fucking fat Tony. OK, I'm getting hard. She uses a hand press, maximum production of 3,000 a day. We estimate that there'll be uh, 15,000 ready to go as at the end of the week. And at least a million in cash. Let's hit a Saturday. Well, that's grand final day. I'm not sure the fellas are going to be too happy about that. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was a seven day a week operation. Sunday. Bit of luck. We'll catch Tony with his pants down. Go to the pies. <laughs> Thank you. 
job, mate! I'm in the job! Thanks to Neighbourhood Watch, Tony escaped getting caught up in the burglary by the skin of his teeth. But yet another drug lab had gone to God. Plus, he'd lost a promising drug cook with sensational legs. Emma Stiles, is this your house? No. Do not let him in the house, whatever you do. It's a bit late for that. Emma, word of warning. Don't talk me. Maybe you're gonna have to come with us. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I can get in the car myself. Get off me. I'm not denying anything about the robbery. We knew the place was going to be raided tomorrow, so we thought we'd get in there first and nick the stuff. You and Senior Constable Michel? Yeah. But, well, lesson learned. Don't go try to rob a house in a neighbourhood watch area, eh? It's good advice. There was supposed to be a third person with us. David's direct boss, Senior Sergeant Paul Dale. Know him. That's a serious accusation. Why are you telling us? Well, you'd want to know, wouldn't you? Kerry Hodson's allegations against Paul Dale would make waves for years to come. For us... We'd fit it up, Jim. Then for the criminal underworld. Get your hands off me. Yeah? Listen, Emma, I'm really sorry, you know? Man, you, you need... Yeah, anything, you just let me know. Hey, look, you know, maybe when you get out, I'll, uh, I'll be legit and I can offer you a good job. A proper job. Yeah. All right, you take care. See ya. Late 2003, and Danielle Maguire was released after serving 19 months of her three-year drug sentence. But the good news for Tony didn't last long. His best mate, Carl Williams, was doing more cocaine than ever and was ever more unpredictable. You learned some new tricks while I was away. That's good. for a lawyer, just so you know. That's cool. Tony? Tony, where are you? Shit. Are you there? What? Tony? Hey, what's going on? Look, it's Carl. He's had a brain snap or something, all right? Now, I know there's shit gone down between you two, but I need some good fucking head on their shoulders, all right? Now, you can talk to him, you can get through to him. Listen, Carl, me lately, look. Yeah, I, I don't care. He needs you. Now! Betty! Come on, Betty! Come on, all right! Come on, all right! Come just... on, Okay? Give me a minute. Fine! Carl. Tony! Carl, what are you doing, mate? You all right? Hey, Put hey. the gun away. Put the gun away. Oh, well. Put the gun away, <laughs> Carl. <laughs> put, <laughs> put it down, hey, mate. Hey, <laughs> Boomerang. Carl, you're just doing too much shit, mate. You're going crazy. Hey, mate, I can trust you, can't I? Yeah, 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 hey, yeah, of course I you can. I can trust you. Yeah. Carl. I don't know who I can trust! Carl, throw the gun away. Come on. Get inside, Roberta. I'll look after him. They kept on at me about you, you know. Who did? Jax. Told him to fuck off because you were my mate. Didn't give him nothing. You just came and throw it all back in my face with the right drug deal. Arsehole. Oh, Jesus, mate. When's oh. this bloody war gonna end, hey? When? When they end! Mark? Jace? I got them back. I got them back on principle. They had it coming. So, yeah. It's over. I 
I think we're off here. Goodbye, Lewis. Then that's it, Carl. Okay? You're done. We've found 13 million worth so far. That's a good start. Yeah, there's going to be more in hidden assets, though. You know, it's a shame we didn't let him build the Wing Wonder first. Could have dismantled it brick by brick. Whatever resources you need, Jim, I'm going to take him for everything he's got. All right, Mr. Mock Bell. Hey, Tony. Warrant for you. We're seizing documents under the Confiscation Act 1997, proceeds of crime. What bloody crime? Uh, you'll also see in the warrant a list of properties owned by you or your companies uh, that have been placed under a restraining order. You may not trade in or access income from these properties until the matter's been sorted out by a court. These are all legitimate businesses. Yeah. They haven't got bank loans against them, all right? All the paperwork's in there. Well, you just need to explain to the court how you paid for the bank loans, but if you've got the paperwork and the invoices and the tax returns, then you've got nothing to worry about, have you? It would have been good. It's a shame. Tony's dreams of legitimacy were always destined to go up in smoke. I guess you can't be a pillar of the community when you've got murderers for mates. Men like Carl Williams and Johnny Tedesco. Well, Carl, Carl did all the, uh, all the day to day stuff, like, uh, like the gun in the car. The money. The money came from, from Tony. You know, Tony, yeah? Like from Tony Mockbell. The one that uh, wanted Michael Marshall killed because he reckoned. And Michael killed Willie Thompson. Johnny Tedesco was a liar, Tony but he was a very convincing liar. His statement would prove to be a time bomb for Antonios Saji Mockbell. I wasn't gonna go away for a while. Now you're gonna run things for me. This is his ultimate game changer. Where is Mr. Mothbell? We don't have him, Your Honor. <laughs> Fat Tony Co. continues next Sunday, 8:40.